Let us continue with the uh, synthesis for the general systems articulated systems with a tree structure. And if I remember right, last day we were talking about how to see in which space the linkages can move. Uh, if it's the whole you know, uh, six-dimensional space of rigid motion, or if we are talking about a subspace, or even not even a subspace, but a subset. Remember we said that we, we define the workspace, right? And we said in general that's not that is not a subgroup of the group of rigid motion, right? That was the workspace were the motions such that they came from the product of exponentials. I divided by two S I I equal one to N such that this is equal to W. And then we said for whatever values of the thetas we put there, okay? So this was the workspace and we saw that in general this doesn't have to be a subgroup. Uh, we know that the, it is a subgroup when we are talking about a single joint, the single joints of the, the typical joints that we use, what we call the lower pairs, are always subgroups. But uh, when you compose two joints, then it doesn't have a structure of subgroup anymore. We saw that, and let me see where we stopped. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, for the synthesis purpose, what we care about is not the subs or the workspace of a single mechanism. Now it comes a little bit of a conceptual uh, jump. We care about the possible subspace of any system that we can define with the topology that we want. Okay, so that's what we call the generic workspace. workspace which will be the workspace of any possible topology of a given of a given kind of any possible any possible system of a given topology and if you have extra restrictions then of course with whatever extra restrictions we have for the design. So in general we can say that we call this one S and it's very similar to the set of displacements such that they come from the product of exponentials delta theta i, we put the hat over 2 si, okay. For whatever angle we have, but also for all possible joints. Uh, and I haven't defined this one yet, so I should have done this before. I'm going to use this. All right. And let me say what this is. So you, but you get the idea. Imagine that you want to design a robot with two revolute joints, okay? So the workspace, so it, one revolute joint can be here or it can be there or it can be, it can be anywhere in space. So you have to count the workspace at you know, this joint located anywhere in space can generate. Usually we are talking about a very big space, basically, you know, in many cases it's just the whole space, you know, it's the whole SE3, the whole group of spatial displacements. So let us define those SI where this SI is the smallest subalgebra containing all instances of joint SI. Shh. 
containing all instances of joint SI. So for each joint, you can define the smallest of algebra containing all possible joints of that kind with whatever restrictions you have. It's big, okay? Um, let's do an example, for instance. Let's take a revolute joint. So S1 equal to revolute joint. So how is a revolute joint? We can write them as, you know, as a six-dimensional vector. This is just basically a, a, the Plucker coordinates of a line, right? S1 plus epsilon S10, if you want. If you remember that this is an element of the Lie algebra SE3, right? The Lie algebra of the tangent directions, the joints, the velocities. This is little s3, the Lie algebra. This has six components, right? And in principle, they are, you know, five, uh, four of them are independent, right? Because we have the two constraints there. But if, if we had the velocity, you know, being able to get any magnitude for this one, then, you know, it's basically a general screw, a revolute joint, right? So we can write this as a, as a combination of, a linear combination of our basis vectors. Remember those? Of basis. So what is the small, smallest space that would contain, I'm not talking about the subalgebra, but yes, a vector space. You know, the smallest set containing all possible instances of this. No? So you have all, you know, all instances you could have You could have, we, because we are doing design, we don't specify how this joint is. It could be oriented in the x, in the y, in the z, in any possible combination. So that space has to have S1 equal x, it has to contain S1 equal y, it has to contain S1 equal z, and all possible combinations of those, general orientation, and then it has to contain any possible point it could be located anywhere in space, okay? Any possible S0. Which means is that the smallest subalgebra containing a simple revolute joint, or all possible instances of a single revolute joint, is the whole Lie algebra, okay? S1 asterisk is equal to SE3. You know, in design, because everything is unknown and, you know, you get this kind of thing. So actually, you know, your workspace here has an axis that, you know, has an axis that can be anywhere in the whole SE3, okay? And then you have the product of those. So in this case is not interesting, it's kind of a trivial case. How about we take a, a prismatic joint? Mm -hmm. Let's see, can I extend more? Yeah. Case, let's just say S2. S2 equal to P, prismatic joint. So what is S2 asterisk 
is on possible prismatic joints. Now, if you remember the prismatic joint, S2, if we write it as a 6 by 1 vector, and I'll keep alternating so that we see everything, what you have is 0, 0, 0, and a ve general vector here, right? S2x, S2y, S2z. That gives you the direction of your translation, right? So if we can have any direction in space for the translations, all possible instances of a prismatic joint, what kind of subspace are we defining? What's the dimension of that? It's 3, right? We are defining R3. So all possible instances, let me just erase this one out here. It's not the whole S3 this time. All possible instances <coughs> gives you R3. Okay, the whole space of translations, the whole space of, ve of 3D vectors. And that in this case that coincides with the subalgebra containing that. Okay, so that S2 equal to R3. Okay. Won't be a CG because uh, of uh, the direction vector, uh, the revolution vector. Uh, this one. Uh, for the prismatic. In the prismatic, we only care about the direction. So when you are performing a translation, it doesn't matter what your vector is. The only thing that matters is the direction of yeah. your vector and the magnitude. So you only have three parameters for that. You know, the other three are R zero. You don't have any rotation. You can think about it that way. So you know, all possible instances, we they all will have the zeros in the in the component related to the rotation axis because there is no rotation, which means that we will generate a, a subspace of dimension three, and that's actually a subalgebra. You can actually just multiply those. Remember when we did the Lie bracket of these times themselves, you always get zero. So that means that you know you don't add anything else by adding the Lie bracket, and in this case, the subspace coincides with the subalgebra. Okay. So in this case, if you have only a single revolute joint, then you have all your joints could be your joint could be anywhere in your in your three D space, right? And then you could perform all kind of of of, uh, of translations there, and then your subspace will be the equivalent. Okay. Let me just do this case because let me just go to the next page. In this case. We have, uh, uh, I haven't proved this one, but believe me when I tell you. <laughs> so all, all the all all the all the uh, possible translations will form this Lie algebra of dimension three, and then the corresponding subgroup. If you don't have limitation on your joint variables, if they go from zero, from minus infinity to infinity, then your S will be the subgroup of. Uh, translations R3. So t this is this is the subgroup. It's not the, the subspace in the Lie algebra. Okay, the subgroup subgroup of 3D translations. So the generic workspace, the generic not the workspace, the generic workspace of a single revolute joint is the whole R3. You can. But the, the way we ne need to interpret that is, you know, when we create a design with a revolution that we don't know what it is, we are targeting the whole space of translations. That's what we are trying to define. What kind of space is our linkage going to move in if we don't know what exactly your linkage is? Okay, so that's the idea of this generic space. Now, to create, to, to calculate this generic workspace is complicated because of what we said that, you know, sometimes uh, you don't get a subgroup. So calculate the dimension of something that is not a subgroup is really complicated. And what we want to do is instead of working in the generic workspace, work in the corresponding Lie algebra. So the smallest subalgebra that will contain all these instances and then the dimension of that subalgebra will be equal to the dimension of the smallest 
subspace containing the motion of any generic linkage of a given type. Okay, <laughs> are we lost? <laughs> yes. Okay, this, this is kind of uh, conceptually difficult to understand and we will do some examples, but let me see if I can explain that. So, um, we want the space or, or, or the smallest subgroup subgroup in which the motion of our system of of uh, the system we want to design we want to design and this this the motion of the system we want to design in general will be s is contained so we don't want the special you know uh, shape of this one we just want the subgroup in which that is contained is it in a subgroup or is it in the whole uh, group of, of 3d motion okay so we want the smallest subgroup in which the motion of a system in general you know that could be here or there or in somewhere else is contained now we said working with the group is a little bit more difficult what we do is then what we do is we look at the at the smallest subalgebra We look at the smallest subalgebra containing all the instances of the joints. And we will, we want, but hopefully it can be proved, that that subalgebra containing all instances gives you that subgroup when you do the when you use the exponential map. So we look at the smallest subalgebra containing all instances of the joints joints to be designed uh, instance of the joints in a given given topology remember that by topology we mean number of joints type of joints and connectivity between the joints so given that you take all the joints we look at all possible instances and if there are extra constraints we, we apply to those, we consider those two. For instance, we may say, okay, but we want all these joints to be parallel. Okay, that's something else we need to calculate here. If you have extra constraints, you have to take them into account. And we look at this smallest subalgebra, and then the dimension of that has to be equal to the dimension of that. Then, this one is what we call the linkage locus space linkage and we invented this name I don't know if with a lot of fortune or not but you can think of the place where all the axes of the linkage are located okay it's a space in fact it's a subalgebra by definition this is the way we define it we define it as the smallest subalgebra containing each of those subalgebras that we define S1 asterisk s2 asterisk s and asterisk and this point here means that you know you are creating the smallest subalgebra containing all this okay when you do this you are you are uh, putting in your set this subalgebra this subalgebra and all possible lip products lip brackets of every element of this and this okay so this is a subalgebra in the Lie algebra now why is it that is not oh. <laughs> come on okay this is the, what we call the linkage locus space. 
So what we want to say is that the dimension of the linkage lock space will be equal to the dimension of the generic workspace through the exponential map. And this is something that you know you may not even care about most of the times, but from time to time you may find a specific system that we are going to design in which this is important because you are not moving in the whole space, you are moving in a subgroup. And then you need to identify that, otherwise your counting won't work and you won't know what is happening. And that's because you are not moving in the general space, you are moving in a subgroup. Okay. That was a little bit heavy, right? So, now that we have this defined, <laughs> we'll do some examples. We can look at what is the general case and what happens when we don't have the general case. So all this came <coughs> to place just because we wanted to know, recall, if we could do exact synthesis or not. That's all what it is about exact synthesis conditions I see how many positions you know arbitrary positions how many arbitrary displacements you know you give me a topology and I can calculate how many arbitrary displacements it can reach exactly and you know that depends on whether it moves in the whole space or it moves in a subspace and that's that's why we are doing all that so we can define now that we have this lang linkage lock space that you know gives you the generic workspace in which uh, you know topology can move we can define if we have redundant degrees of freedom degrees of freedom That's very easy to calculate, right? In general, we can talk about redundant will be equal to you take all the degrees of freedom of your of your system, the sum i equal one to j of your f i. Remember, this is the notation of the Chebyshev, Katzbach, Grebler formula, which means j is the number of joints and f i is the degree of freedom of each of the joints. So this gives you the total degrees of freedom of your system, and now you have to subtract the dimension of the linkage lock space. Okay. What this came to tell you is that you know if you move in the whole space then you know you will have redundant degrees of freedom and if you have more than six this will be six, right? This will be the whole SE three. But if you move in a subgroup, you need to identify that because then you know four may be redundant if you move in a subgroup. Okay. For synthesis, we want R to be uh, it cannot even be equal to zero, right? Because then it is. So we want to have not only not to have redundant degrees of freedom, but we have negative value here. If you have the same degrees of freedom as the dimension of your space, then you can reach any possible displacement and you cannot do synthesis. Okay, so you have to have less than that. <laughs> there is a, a little slightly more generic way of defining this. Instead of doing this, All right. So let's take a simple revolute joint, R. And let's consider that that is a generic one. And it, we already did that, right? So for this one, the linkage locus space was equal to SE3. If we look at the I guess I should give you that. Uh, 
Well, let's see if we look at the degrees of freedom of this as a join that is equal to 1, right? So the sum of fi, yeah, this is kind of ugly, i equal 1 to j is equal to 1. We have 1 degree of freedom here. And this is less than the dimension of the linkage log of space, which is equal to 6, right? Which means we can perform exact dimensional synthesis. Okay, let's take another case. Let's just take, how about a PP? Two prismatic joints in series. So the linkage locus space of that, you have one, remember it's the generic instances of that, one of them covers the whole R3, the other one covers the whole R3 again, so the total is again R3. Right? That means these two joints can be located anywhere in the space of translations. That's what we mean by that. The sum of this one of fi, i equal 1, in this case to 2, right, will be equal to 2. Say that again? Uh, which is less than the... Yes, which is less than the dimension of L, which is 3. So then we can do dimensional synthesis. Okay, should we do one more example? Which one do we want to do? We can put specific conditions also. You know, we could say, let's take all... No, we cannot do, okay, let's take PPP. So you see three joints, you know, in general you would think, okay, three joints, you know, it's less than the, the dimension of our space, which is six, I would, would be able to do it. The linkage lock space is R3 again, because, you know, any of these joints can lock, be located anywhere in the R3 space, but the sum of Fi, I equal one to three, each of them has one degree of freedom, is equal to three. And this is equal to the dimension of L, which means that we cannot, perform dimensional synthesis, which means, you know, you can reach any translation with three joints. So there is no point in, in trying to design a system for a specific number of translations because any system will be able to reach them. So you have infinity of solutions. That's what we mean when we say no. What we mean is infinity of solutions for synthesis. synthesis. All right, let's do another one. Let's say, let's put some restrictions. So far they have been generic, so let's say now imagine that we want to design a system in which we have a revolute joint which is, uh, goes in the z direction, okay? So what else? We have a revolute joint in the z direction and, uh, and a p joint which is perpendicular. Rp with R along Z and P perpendicular. All right. So now remember that L will be equal to the sum of S1 and if you want SR, the smallest subalgebra of this, and then we create the algebra that contains the smallest subalgebra of this one too. So now, in this case, we need to look more carefully. So say, okay, the smallest subalgebra of this R, which goes only in the z direction. So remember, it could, the, the z direction is fixed, but it, it could be anywhere in space, right? So what is the smallest subalgebra containing that? It has dimension 4, right? 
it probably corresponds, and I'm not sure how it's the, what's the name of this subalgebra, um, but it corresponds to, to well, it has dimension four, but because well, the point is, you know, the point has to be on the line, it's dimension three. So it co kind of corresponds to the, to the planar motion, right? So for SR, the direction, so let's put the generic. SR will be of this kind, 0, 0, 1, and then any point cross that, which, which gives you, let me just say, okay, so C, X, C, Y, C, C, cross 0, 0, 1, so that gives you X component, and it gives you C component, but it doesn't give you Y component, right? So let's say C, X, C, Y, zero. That will be the generic. So it has, it's three dimensional, this, this uh, subspace of, of, the, of the Lie algebra. And then we have the SP, which has to be perpendicular to the Z axis. So that means it will be 0, 0, 0, and then we have px, py, 0. Okay, that's a generic element. So when we do this together, we will end up with the, the space of dimension 3 again, right? With the same one as here, because these two combine with those in that way. So, I don't know what's the name of it, sorry, I should look at that. But let me say that the dimension of L will be equal to 3. Now you can try, just do all possible Lie li brackets of an element of this type with an element of this type and see what you get. And you should get an element of the same type. Do we want to do some of those? Or are we okay? Yeah, let's try one. Let's try? Okay. So, there are so many that some possible Lie brackets, right? Yeah, we haven't finished that. So basically, this is the dimension of this. This will be 2, and then 2 less than 3 we could do. In fact, this is you know, the, the group of planar motions. That's what it is, and then two joints within the group of planar motion, right? Some, um, some Lie brackets. Remember that you can always do the Lie brackets as a linear combination. So if you have an element like this, you can put this equal to a coefficient times this basis vector plus another coefficient times this. So let me just do SR, SP will be equal to, and now it is bilinear, so that will be uh, K1 omega, omega K, right? That, that's the basis vector plus K2 VI plus K3 VJ. That's the generic element of the Lie algebra with K, I don't know, C1 VI plus C2 VJ. And now we can just you apply by bilinearity, by which means this element times that, and then that will split in this, times this, plus this, times that, plus that. So we can apply the bilinearity. So let's just take a few of those. So the first one, for instance, would be K1 omega K comma C1 VI plus K1 omega K comma C2 VJ plus I don't know, K2VI, VI, comma, C1VI, plus K2, 
K2VI plus C2VJ plus many, many, right? And we can, uh, okay, we can do some of these products. So you guys copy it because I have to move to the next page and then I won't have the space to, I won't be able to look at this. So we have it, right? So ri just remind me now what is the, so we have K, K1, Omega K, C1, VI, right? Yeah. What is this one? Do you guys have the, from last day, what was omega k comma? Of course, the constant can go outside. Remember what was this one? Omega k, vi? Omega k, omega i? Omega vi. I. So one omega with a different v. I mean, you may not have that exact case. Uh, it was j. Vj? Uh, we have i, uh, k. I, k. And what did you get? J? J. Okay. So K I <laughs> I'm not sure K now. J, K okay. J was minus VA. This this is done by, by doing the cross product, in fact, the, the dual cross product. So K K J was minus V I K I will be and that is V, right? V J. Plus minus. That would be V. Yeah. Plus minus. Okay. So we have an element with this in the algebra already. Okay? plus the constants of, let me just put it right. You guys want to do it in detail, see what it is? Jim Esker may have all the all those products, I don't have them, I just put some of those. I think K times I gives you J, but I'm not sure. Okay, so Jim Esker is looking at it, he will tell us if it's not right. Let's take the next one. So K1, Omega K, and then we have C2VJ, right? And then that was minus B, VI, right? VI. So that's also inside of our algebra. And then the next one was K2 VI C1 VI and VI comma VI was zero, right? And then the next one was K2 VI C. Sorry, this is C1, not not C2, C1, VI, C2, VJ, and that's also zero. So this is kind of a proof that, you know, when we, when we do all the possible Lie brackets of all the elements, we will still be in that three-dimensional subspace, which, com which is, consists of, uh, of the K component of the rotation and the X and the Y component of the translation. In general, it may not have to work, so you have to do this every time to, to see if when you do the disclosure of the algebras, okay, you end up with the same subspace or if it becomes bigger, or the same subalgebra if it becomes bigger. In this case, every, all the products fall within the, the subalgebra. So. so this one is equal to 3. It's basically generated by omega k as a basis. Omega k vi vj. So if we be believe that, we can go back to the problem we were solving, which was we had this RP where R was in the Z direction, P is, is perpendicular. We had that the dimension of the linkage local space is three. And then we have that the sum, I'll give you the formula at the end because I don't like this one. I equal to one to two is equal to two which is less than 3, which means, yes, we can do synthesis. What if we define the R and the P to be you know, in the same direction, for instance? Coincident. This one do have a perpendicular? 
In this case, they are perpendicular, and this, in, is, this goes in the z direction. If, it, if it's not specified that it goes in the z direction, then our, sp our space is not dimension 3, then it's dimension 6 again, because your joint could be anywhere, OK? So you could have not only this 3 space, but this one and this one, and all possible 3 spaces, which when you do the closure, you get the whole 6 space, OK? Let's do another example, if you guys want. You want to try some other example, or is this OK? Yeah, the one one. Which one? A smaller one, a bigger one? One more restricted. Should we do, let's just do an RP in which both joints are parallel. RP. And we'll do two cases. Just leave it in general and then specify the exact direction. Okay. RP uh, and specify with parallel, with parallel R and P. And then we'll put unspecified unspecified okay so let's start with the uh, the smallest subalgebra containing all possible instances of R is already SE3 is the whole space which means that whatever P is the total thing is going to be SE3 which means that the dimension of the locus linkage space is going to be equal to 6 you know, you, are, you cannot add anything else, right? And now we have that. <sighs> I think next day, today you are too saturated, but next day I'm going to give you the formula for, instead of this. Uh, this is equal to 2. 1 degree of freedom here, 1 degree of freedom here is 2. So this is less than 6, which means that, yes, you can do synthesis for a cylindric joint, basically. That's what you are saying. This is just a cylindric joint rotation and translation in the same direction. Okay. Now let's specify the direction, for instance, or the location, or both. If we specify both, then you know we, are spe we don't have to do design, right? Everything is specified. So now let's consider RP. What should we specify the direction? RP going in RP parallel with fixed direction Z, let's say, it doesn't matter which one. Okay. All right, let's see. Okay, so let's go to the SR first. We just specify the direction. So again, we are in this three-dimensional space of the R joint, right? Which I don't know the name of, and that's why instead of writing it, I'm going to just write it. Oh, let me just let me just give you the generic. It will be zero zero omega z omega k, and then we have some v i v j zero, right? And uh, it's Selig, for instance, Selig's book, which is, um, what's the name of Selig's book? Um, robotic something? Geometric. Methods for robotic or geometric methods for, anyway, Selig's book from 2005. He has all these subalgebras of the Lie algebra IC3 classified, so you have a nice table. Probably I should put that in my notes someday. Um, so this is the SR and then the SP. Now the SP is a little bit different, right? It goes in the Z direction. It's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, VZ. What happens when we combine these two to create the smallest of algebra? Let's just do one, I think, just a simple Remember, this is the linkage locus space. It's just the closure of this subalgebra. Okay, everything inside. I'm forming an algebra. Um, let's just do a product that will take us off of this subspace here. You know, in theory, we have to do all possible products, but let us do 
Ah, uh, let's just do omega k with the vz. What do we get when we do the omega k comma vz? Who has that one? Yeah. Zero. Omega k. Oh, okay. So this one is <laughs> this one is not helpful. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Okay. We need to. Okay. Let me just put this one again. Zero zero omega k v i v j zero. Zero, 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 VZ. Okay, I thought that somehow we were going to get, but I'm not sure which product to do to get a bigger, bigger space. So all the VIs, VJs, uh, is, are going to be zero, right? Mm. Yeah, hmm. Well, I guess in that case we just add this one there, and we have the space, so the generic element will be 0, 0, omega k, v i, v j, v z, right? So this is a four-dimensional subalgebra in which, you know, the, the, uh, to me it's easier to, to look, look at it from the subgroup point of view, so the corresponding subgroup will be all possible translations and rotations only in one direction. We don't add anything else, right? Yeah. Okay. So this, the, the dimension of this one is dimension four, and that is a, this is a valid subalgebra. Okay. It has a name which. Um, so V I V J for the translations. V I V J for uh, will will give will be the translation given by the rotation, and then V V K will be the translation given by the by the extra. Mm, prismatic joint. Mm -hmm. So translations everywhere, rotations in a single direction, and that is actually a subalgebra. Uh, so now we sum those fi i equal one to two is equal to two, which is less than four. So yes, we can do use. Yes, we can use a cylindric joint which will have fixed direction to design a system that will have all translations, one rotation. Yeah. Okay, this example was supposed to be more interesting, but at the end it was pretty trivial, right? So this is the generic element of the algebra, if you want, okay? This multiply times constants. All right. So we all the cases have been a yes, oh, except the three piece. The three piece were a no. Um, let me see if I can think of a more interesting case. No, I think that it's basically either you have redundant degrees of freedom in your translations, or you have, or you have redundant degrees of freedom in general. You cannot have redundant degrees of freedom in your rotation because the rotation actually defines rotation and translation. And that's why. Uh, so you know, all this big theory basically uh, reduces to a couple of cases. You know, it's or if you are very very specific in the directions you want to pick, then it, you may reduce further. But it's basically either translations only or the whole space. You know. So anyway, so once we have this more or less worked out, so we can calculate these spaces and we feel a little bit confident, we will see how we use this. And I guess we'll do that next day because it's already 12. Uh, and because I left my examples in, in my office.